Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about products. Products are very similar to summations, except in with products, we multiply all the terms of a sequence instead of add them. So for product, we use a capital pi symbol. This is a capital pi, just like lowercase. Everybody's seen lowercase. Pi is equal to 3.14159 dot dot dot. Here we have an uppercase pi. And we have, just like with summations, we have a lower bound. This is our lower bound. All right, so this is going to start with a sub m, the index is m, the lower bound. And here we have an upper bound. So we're going to go until we get to a of n. And here k is the index. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply all of the terms between a of m and a and n together. And we'll plate this times a to the m plus 1, times a to the m plus 2, and so on. And then we're going to have, now remember n is just some number. This n could be 100. And so the number before that would be 99 or n minus 1. Right. So the product is just like a summation, except instead of adding, we do multiplication. And similarly to a summation, we can also provide a recursive definition of a product. So here's a product. And what I can do is I can gather the, those terms together and I can rewrite this. So this is the product. Now notice we're starting at M. But now we're going to n minus 1, and then we've got this same term with the index k. So what I can do is I can rewrite this entire product as the product from k equals m to n minus 1 of a of k times this last term. And just to clarify, it's a good idea to put parentheses around that. All right, if you leave them out, it's generally understood, but this is, this is a, a better way of doing that. Because this is very different than this. Because in this situation, every time we multiply, we've got an extra A of N. So we don't want that. Okay. Now what if we want to add an extra term to the end of a product? As always, we want to expand, expand, expand. So first, let's rewrite this product via expansion. So the first term, k is equal to 1. So we're going to have 2 to the 1 plus 1 plus 1 times 2 to the 2 plus 1 plus 1 times, and so on, all the way until we get to our n term, which is this n up here, 2 to the n plus 1 plus 1. So that's how we rewrite this product through expansion. And so the question is, we want to add a term to the end, so what would be the next term? If we could put something right there. Well, that next term is 
is going to be, we went up to n, so remember n is again just a number, maybe it's uh, 50. Um, so we want to go to 51, we want to go to that n plus 1. We've got 2 to the n plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, right? So I just replaced that n right there with an n plus 1. That's going to be the next term in uh, if we wanted to add an extra term. Now we have to be careful because we can't just multiply that in there uh, because that would no longer equal this. So let's rewrite our statement. And the full expanded version, we're going to start at 1, but now we're going to go to n plus 1 of 2 to the k plus 1 plus 1 is going to equal this old um, product that we started with. times this new term. You can simplify that and call it 2, n plus 2, plus 1. And for clarity, I'm going to move those together. Okay, so this is how we would add a term, this is the new term, to the end of a product. What if we want to remove the first term of a product? Well, once again, as always, we want to expand. So let's expand this. So this is going to be here, we have our, uh, our product variable as i. And we start i at i equals 1. So I'm going to have 1 over 1 squared times 1 over 2 squared. And I could simplify and call that 1 times 1 fourth times if I wanted. But there's no real need. Uh, cube 3 squared times dot, dot, dot. And then let's do... The last term is going to be 1 over n squared. And I like throwing in the next to last term. So that's going to be 1 over n minus 1 squared. All right. So this is our expansion. And now we want to remove the first term. Well, this is the first term. So let's rewrite this without that term. So this is going to be i equals 1 to n of 1 over i squared. This is, of course, the original term. And I'm going to say this is equal to, well, if I pull this first term out, that's just a 1 times the rest of that. Well, what's the rest of that going to be? That's going to be the product. Now notice where we start. Now we're starting at 2. So i is going to equal 2, and we still go to n, n of 1 over i squared. Right. So in fact, because multiplying anything by 1 is it's the same thing, we could just say that this product is the same as that product. Now you might not realize this, but you know an example of a product in the in the real world. And if you think about it, this is going to be factorial. So factorial, we often will say it, especially we'll say n factorial equals n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times all the way down to 1. Well, another way of writing that is to say this is the product, the 
n factorial equals the product of, okay, equals, well, where do we start? Now, notice this is in reverse order, and products we normally think about being the other order. So I could rewrite this as this is 1 times 2 times 3 times all the way up till we get to n minus 1 times n. So our starting value is this 1, and we go to n is our ending value. And what do we have? Each one of these terms is just our index. So there we go. Right. And this is going to give us that. So n a factorial is a product that you don't normally think of using this product notation, this capital pi symbol, but that's really what's going on.